The angular momentum L for a rotating object can be written as I omega, where I is the moment of inertia and omega is the rotational speed or rotational velocity. Angular momentum is also equal to mass times velocity times R, where R is the distance away from some center point that this object with mass times velocity is moving. Um, and the kinetic energy of a rotating object is one half I omega squared. So for part A, um, in order to uh, find the rotational velocity of the merry-go-round after the boy jumps on it, we're going to consider the fact that angular momentum is conserved. So the initial angular momentum is all coming from the boy. So this is going to be M times B times R, where the mass of the moving boy is 40 kilograms, R is 2 meters, and V is 4 meters per second. These were all given in the question. And then this is going to be equal to the final angular momentum, where the final angular momentum is the moment of inertia merry-go-round, I sub M, plus the moment of inertia of the boy at the distance R away. So this is going to be M R squared multiplied by omega f, the final angular speed. So again, I m was given. It's 20 kilogram times meter squared. M here is still the mass of the boy, 4 kilograms, or 40 kilograms. And r is the distance he is away from the center of the merry-go-round, um, 2 meters. So solving for omega f, we find that this is equal to divide I sub plus M squared. Plugging values in, we find that the final uh, angular speed is 0.78 radians per second. We can box that in as our solution for part A of this question. For part B of this question, we are going to uh, find the change in kinetic energy of the system consisting of the boy in the merry-go-round. Okay, so let's scroll down so we have enough room here. So the change in kinetic energy, delta K, is by definition the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So Kf minus Ki. Well, the initial kinetic energy is just running boy, right? Because the merry-go-round is initially at rest. So this is one half mv squared. Where again, M is the mass of the boy, 40 kilograms. V is the velocity that the boy is running, 4 meters per second. And we're going to subtract from that the final kinetic energy. So this is rotational kinetic energy, right? Because the boy jumps on the merry-go-round. So this is 1 half I. And again, remember, I is the, the moment of the merry-go-round plus the moment of inertia from the boy. So I, I said plus MR squared, mass of the boy, the distance he is away from the center of the merry-go-round, squared. Um, times omega f squared. Well, now we know omega we found it in part A. So we know all the values that go into this equation. So plugging them in, we find that delta k is equal to negative 35.6 joules. So we can box that in um, as our solution for part B. For part C, we're going to find the change in the boy's kinetic energy, right? So let's scroll down to so make sure we have enough room. We can call this delta KB for the change in kinetic energy of the boy. And this is equal to, again, the initial kinetic energy Energy boy, or excuse me, final kinetic energy of the boy, KBF, minus the initial kinetic energy of the boy, KBI. The final state, kinetic energy of the boy, is one half times the boy's moment of inertia. Remember, the boy's moment of 
than just MR squared times the final um, rotational velocity omega f squared. Okay. So now, oh, actually, hold on. I, I apologize. I think I made a mistake here. Let's go up just to make sure. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I did. So I wrote K final minus K initial, but then I swapped them around. So K initial is the one half MV squared and K final is one half I omega squared. So to fix this, you probably noticed that all that would do is get rid of that negative sign. So this should be plus and minus. So really those two should have been swapped here. I should have swapped those two. K final is the one half I sub M plus MR squared omega final squared and K initial is one half MV squared. But the answer there is correct. So I, I apologize about that, but I just caught it when doing this. So now back to part C, um, we have one half MR squared times omega final squared minus one half MV squared for the void. That was initial kinetic. Plug these values and find that delta key B K B boy is negative 67.2. So he's losing a lot of energy. And we can box it in as our solution for B. Or excuse me, for C. And then for part D, we have to find the change in kinetic energy of the merry-go-round. Okay, M. Uh, K sub M. Let's make that look like it's a subscript there. There we go. So the kinetic energy of the merry-go-round minus the initial kinetic energy of the merry-go-round, right? So F minus KMI. But the kinetic energy of the initial part of the merry-go-round is zero because it starts out at rest, right? So that's zero. This is equal to Kf is one half of m, the moment of inertia of the round. So this, this time, the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round plus the boy because we're just discussing the merry-go-round. This is I sub m times omega f squared. Taking that value in, we find it's equal to and said it's positive because it started out at rest, positive 31.6 joules. So the blue loses energy and the ground gains energy. And then lastly, in part E, we are um, we're asked to compare the kinetic energy changes in part B through part D. So what we just found in B, C, and D in part E. And what we find is that K, the total change in kinetic energy, is equal to the change in kinetic energy plus changing kinetic energy of the merry-go-round. So let's go ahead and make a little statement of this. So we can say, in other words, the total kinetic energy, which I'm going to abbreviate with Ke, uh, change in the system is equal to the sum of the Ke changes in the individual objects that make up the system. This is merry-go-round and boy. And that makes sense, right? This is just conservation of energy, essentially. So we can go ahead and box all of this in as our solution part E. And that is the final part of this question.